question is from Derek McMullen. <clears throat> of the three major powerlifting lifts, which one did you have to work the hardest on to get stronger, and which one was the easiest? Oh, cool question. Yeah. Mm. So um, we're probably what, all different here too. Yeah, I think yep. so. What were your What were your top lifts in each of the three lifts? What have you, What in your life? What are the th Let's start with that because I think that's a cool thing to okay. So to share. bench mm. uh, bench three seventy five uh, squat four twenty and deadlift five fifty. Mm, yes. Those are all those are all top numbers on yeah. on that. I did uh, 355 on bench was the most I ever did for squat was 405, deadlift was 600. Um, what about you, Justin? I'm trying to think of my deadlift because that was the weakest. I think it was only like 425 or something like that. And uh, squat squat actually like um, I got up to uh, 475. And then for cakes. for bench, I did. Uh, I got up to to four oh five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the one that I worked on the first um, was bench press, and the the reason why I worked on bench press first was because when I was a kid, All that the was chest. the lift. Yeah, like ben if, bench was king. Yeah, yeah. nobody cared. Like yeah. like if, if they didn't ask you what was your hey what's your deadlift what's your squat I was always like how much can you bench so because there was so much importance placed on that. Mm -hmm. That was the lift that I focused on uh, first and focused on it the most. Um, the deadlift came very natural to me. I'd say the the the, the first time I really started deadlifting, I was maybe sixteen, and three plates was fast. I don't remember how long it took me to get three plates, but it wasn't long at all. Um, and then four plates came pretty quick after that, and then uh, five plates happened in, in my twenties, and then uh, in my thirties when I hit six. That one was really easy. Squats were also difficult, but my legs, uh, forget, even though I have mobility issues in my hips, my legs get really big and strong. And so I got pretty good at the squat, uh, in terms of weight. It was the bench press that took me a long time. And then eventually I think it's what, um, the be always focusing on bench press. I think it's one of the reasons why I eventually had shoulder surgery. Um, and now I never push heavy on the bench press. I have uh, my AC joint um, had to get operated on, and now I just I, I rarely ever go above 225 on the bench press. That's probably as heavy as I, I'll, I'll go ever again. I yeah, think. we're all a little bit different, right? We're I'm, we're where you and I are the same. Um, deadlift just came real natural to me. I remember um, when I first started deadlifting, I was doing like you know 135, like figuring it out. Like my, I mean, it was one of those exercises. Like if you've never done a deadlift, it takes a while to learn the mechanics. Mm -hmm. As soon as I figured the mechanics out, like it's when it started to when when it started to feel smooth, quickly I went from like one plate to two plate to three plate to four plate mm -hmm. to eventually five plate. It didn't take me long to really to really push the numbers and deadlift. It just felt very natural for me. And the opposite is true with squatting. Squatting has been a, a grind my whole life. And even though my squat is okay. Uh, and and my bench isn't isn't that strong. I mean, I got long limbs, so at the end of the day, uh, I, I don't think I was ever uh, built to be a really really strong power lifter in in, in these big lifts. But I I, I moved the needle pretty far on my my bench, especially when I was competing. Like that, the a chest obviously your chest is a major focal point for competitors, so it was an area of emphasis for me and. Uh, I remember really starting to notice a big difference when I started building my, and I also, so when I hit 375, I could hit that on a flat and I could hit that on an incline. So that's probably the, the most impressive thing about my bench was I made a point to be as strong in the incline press as I was the flat, which is not normal. No, most guys can lift significantly more on their flat than they can incline. I had a pretty well developed chest, both an incline and flat bench, and it didn't take as much effort early on as a kid. Uh, chest was really hard for me and bench was hard for me because my mechanics were off. Uh, and that's why I stress that even with the deadlift and all of these things and the end squat too. Like uh, a lot of times when you really struggle with a lift, more often than not, it's you're still learning the mechanics down. And, and for me, I had uh, from all my sports that I had played, you know, and I'm left-handed. I had a little bit of a, this kind of forward shoulder, and it was very, very subtle. The average eye would not be able to see it and tell. I didn't even know and didn't put piece it together until later as a trainer. But I had like one side of my chest, my opposite side, was more developed than my dominant uh, throwing side because I had this kind of rolled forward shoulder. So when I bench pressed. 
my shoulder and my triceps took over the load on that one side. On the opposite side, I had better mechanics, and so my chest was uneven for a long time. So it took me a really long time to actually level that out. And when I when I learned that, saw the importance of it, I also had to stop ego lifting because as a young 17, 18, 19-year-old kid lifting, I was always trying to just keep up with my buddies that were way stronger than me on the bench press. I was weak as fuck and my chest wasn't developed right because I wasn't doing it correctly. When I figured out how to get the mechanics right and fix my imbalance, that took about a year or two of really lightweight, control, learning form and technique. Once that all came together and like I really understood how to chest press, then it, then it kind of took off and it was doing great. The hardest thing has been squat, and I think I was just sharing with you guys that um, you know I'm, that's a recent one for you. Yeah, it's it's recently finally came together, and again back to the form and technique thing is I never really addressed uh, the the mobility thing for me. I never worked on my hips. I never worked on my ankle mobility. I had a really ugly squat, um, even when I worked at it for a long time and got kind of strong in it. Like uh, 315 was just like crippling for me for a very long time. It wasn't until I really started to dr address the hips, the ankles, get better at squatting, and then and then now I'm actually I'm getting close to you know some of my peak numbers. I could probably squat 375. 380 right now um i feel pretty confident about it. and 420 is like my record record and when i was doing that i was actually on anabolics so when i was 420 squatting 420 i was at the peak of my bodybuilding career so i'm actually really excited about that but it's been a grind mm -hmm. to get a good squat it's mm -hmm. been a grind for me yeah i think for me uh I was under the impression based off of all the coaches that I've had and like the programming that I was exposed to through athletics that uh, we pretty much avoided like the deadlift. It was kind of a lot like what you heard out of uh, Robert Oberst and his sort of uh, mentality towards that with, with athletes. That, that's the kind of dogma that was thrown at me quite a bit going through, you know, training. And so uh, we did do uh, power cleans and, and I really honed in on power cleans. So that was like my jam. Like I got up to like 350, uh, you know, power cleaning so I could do a, a decent, you know, <laughs> that's funny. You could power clean 350, but and you could lift four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. I'm serious. And, and it has to be a lot of that's technique, right? And it, of course, it, it, I was completely like, to be to be completely transparent, probably the last few years is only the time I've even put into deadlifting. I've never even really tried to put effort towards maxing on deadlifts. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea, you know, if there's any potential there or not, but it's not something that I really focused on. Squatting came natural to me. That was something that like it, it felt like I could get in the groove of it, you know, pretty, pretty seamlessly. It was something that like felt like immediately, oh yeah, I, I get this. Like my body gets this. I could, I could do well with this. Uh, and that actually, like I, I was putting up some good numbers right out of the gates and like I was immediately jumping. They got, they had groups for, um, like I started out with like the running backs, the, the linebackers, the corners and all that, and then kind of jumped up into the linemen, uh, real fast because like, you know, I could, I could hang with all them in terms of their numbers for squat and their numbers for bench and bench was another one that came naturally to me. Uh, but yeah, it was really like the posterior chain. Like I was in, in terms of like deadlifts and, uh, like I was like any kind of pulling move was a little more difficult for me and pull-ups and all that was very challenging mm -hmm. for me. So, um, yeah, dude, I felt like I like pushing and, and, you know, and those type of mechanics, like I could, I could like seamlessly get into that. It's funny because really, really good deadlifters tend to, some of them are good at squats. Most of them are bad at bench press. Mm -hmm. It's like the things that make you really good at deadlifting, the long arms and the long levers tend yeah. to make That's you. That's what I appreciate a bit. I appreciate that about powerlifting. Yeah, yeah. They consider that. And it's like the, you know, your, your grand total of all of those. You have to, you know, somewhat yeah. do well in all of them. I remember when I pieced together, because I valued strength a lot in lifting weights. I know you, you Adam, you probably placed more of an emphasis on aesthetics longer term than I did. Oh, for sure. I know Justin was very performance oriented like I was. Like uh, For me, I liked building muscle, but I liked the strength of it. And I remember mm -hmm. when I figured out that, you know, if I trained with the lower rep ranges, but frequently where I was practicing two or three reps, but I was doing it three, three days a week or four days a week, I remember piecing that together. And then my numbers just <laughs> go into the roof and I loved it. And that was in my, in my early twenties. That's when I would stop the single body part, you know, one body part at a time type training. Like, you know, if I practice bench press a few days a week, 
let's see what happens. And I got I got my numbers. I I trained for at least ten years and never knew my PR in any of those. Oh, I tested my PR first day I worked out. <laughs> ten years. <laughs> that was the first thing I did. Ten years I trained and could not. If somebody asked that question, first of all, that question was it was rarely ever asked ten years ago. Uh, it's since the the birth of CrossFit, it's a very common thing because they yeah, test. PR was not a thing. Well, it, it was bench press. Was the but only bench thing. press was how much do you max? Yeah, that, yeah, was, that, it. was, that was that was. But the thing. nobody right. was What's talking about max? The, nobody was talking about their PR and anything else. No, no, nothing. And and even then, I again, I didn't, I I did not believe in maxing out. Like I just didn't. I wasn't a strength. I was, I didn't uh, value strength the same way. I was all about aesthetics. And I had learned early on that I could build a pretty good looking physique, and never in my life. Life, max out. And I knew that when I was teaching clients, that was always the safest route. So I was the trainer who kind of actually avoided it with this chip on my shoulder a little bit. Like you max out. That's stupid. What's your goal? Yeah. Are you, are you a power lifter? Oh, you're not a power lifter. Why the fuck are you doing that? I remember you just all, all show, no go. Bro. That's why I, I was to... just like, what? Like it didn't even compute with me. Yeah. Why would you, why would you brag about like, that? What? Yeah. Like, no girl ever asked like, you in the, threw me in the off. bedroom what your PR is. Yeah. That's exactly what I used to say. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and, and honestly, most people that go to the gym, you know, most people there, of course, there's exceptions to the rule. They're listening right now, but most people are going there to change their aesthetics. They want to, they want to lose their fat. They want to build a little bit of muscle they want to look better they want to feel better they want to feel sexy and what i pieced together early on was you know what none of that it, you you do not have to ever train like a strength or a powerlifting no. athlete to achieve that there's very little value to it for the average person i mean well, i can i can make a case for some value but reality you're 100 well right. what, what i'll make the case for and what breaking beyond that happened for me and we've shared this a little bit on the podcast is I have a different looking physique today than what I did eight years ago. Um, and and it's due to lifting heavy weight. Like I've built it. It's it's so hard to explain. It's density. Yeah. Somebody it's who, density. Obviously somebody who's who's been here and done both understand it's really hard for me to articulate this to, uh, to a, a new lifter. But when, and when I went from being the guy who only trained like hypertrophy type training for for a decade, and then I went into strength training and incorporated strength training, I built a different looking muscle on my body. And in, and the best way that I could describe it is I, my hypertrophy that I had was, man, when I would get in the gym and I would lift and I'd get all aired up, I'd look great. I would look like, and I used to always say that, man, if I could just look more like what I look like all pumped up and aired up, which I know everybody can relate to, but I would really deflate after that. And sure, I looked kind of fit, but nowhere near what I looked like inside the gym. When I started lifting really, really heavy, I saw less of a pump, you know, from the workouts, but I started to build like this solid muscle. And I started to notice that, you know, just my arms hanging by my side, you could see my tricep, which you would only see that if I got them all aired up mm -hmm. in the past. And so, and the same thing goes for my legs and goes for my, like all of a sudden I built this muscle that didn't need to be aired up to look solid and big. And that's the best way I can describe that to people and the value of what strength training and heavy lifting did for my body yeah. and physique. But you absolutely could build it without it. Totally. Do you guys have a lift that, like a special lift that if you're, if you want to like work out with someone and you just know you'll crush them at? You have like this one lift that well, dead that, you know you could bro. do. Deadlifting is there's not many. You're probably one of the few people that in our circle that can you know other than fucking our like powerlifting buddies like Ben Polk, the average gym goer. There's not there's definitely nobody in my men's physique group that I hung out with that could <laughs> out deadlift. No, I have a, I have a I have a lift. There's one lift that I could, that I did, and I don't even exercise this anymore. But I knew I could whoever I was working out with, I would freak them out by the amount of weight I could use, and that was a reverse grip, uh, re reverse curl. <laughs> For whatever reason, it's like the dumbest exercise ever. But I put a forty-five the only on, one on the plan that worked on. Yeah, that. I put a forty-five <laughs> on the bar. Yeah, 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 I'm gonna get him on this. Just a simple, <laughs> stupid exercise. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's all right. That's like my mace bell thing. You know, like, yeah. I'll, I'll take the heaviest mace bell you could possibly give me, and I'll fucking crush it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah. 